Over the last 24 weeks, I have analysed 31 stories, each and every one of which has been slowly but surely building up to this monumental finale. Frankly, there is so much to talk about with this story that any decent introduction would take several paragraphs. So let's skip the formalities and jump right into this analysis of Summer Festival, an anime original story that takes place over the entirety of episode 12. The pre-OP scene sets up a few things for us. The first thing it establishes is that Nishkata is nervous, as evidenced by his fidgeting, sweaty palms, and a reluctance to look at the two girls that pass him by. Just because he had the courage to invite Takagi to the summer festival and promises, doesn't mean he isn't internally freaking out about it. Especially after he realised how genuinely excited she was to receive that invitation. The second thing it establishes is that the fireworks are the centrepiece to the entire event. Both advertising material and the two previously mentioned strangers emphasise just how important they are. Placing emphasis on the fireworks from the very beginning helps to make what happens later a more intense gut punch. The third thing it establishes is that Nishkata does not have his phone. This is purely a narrative convenience to ensure that a later scene can play out exactly the way it does. The introduction of Takagi places further emphasis on all three of these points. Nishkata becomes more nervous when she arrives, Takagi puts further emphasis on the fireworks, and Nishkata explicitly explains to her that he does not have his phone. What's interesting about this scene is that Takagi seemingly acts about as nervously as Nishkata does. She mostly makes small talk and can barely look at him. This makes sense when you consider her reaction to the promise. This is a step forward for their relationship that she has always wanted to take, but seemingly wasn't sure if it would happen so soon. But here she is, all dressed up, on a summer festival date with Nishkata. Of course she would be nervous. These nerves do dissipate over the course of the story and are manageable by the time they begin walking to the festival, but starting the story this way is a nice touch and a brilliant way to begin the progression of comfort between these two. The conversation they have while walking to the festival sets up the main conflict for the story. Takagi considers this to be a date, and Nishkata doesn't want to. First, notice how Nishkata barely gets flustered over being explicitly told that Takagi considers this a date. Compared to his reaction over the mere implication in date, his reaction here is far less extreme, suggesting that the idea of going on dates is less inherently embarrassing to him, and he is able to downplay the idea far more calmly than we are used to. Also, Takagi's nonchalant declaration that this is a date further shows how much more assertive she has become, especially compared to how she acted in stories like April Fool's Day, when she clearly wanted a regular conversation, but resigned herself to playing Nishkata's games. We saw her get a little more assertive in camping trip when she implicitly admitted that she wanted Nishkata to love her, with her wish that he would cross the Milky Way to meet her. But that was mostly for the purpose of catharsis, a way to release the last of the nervous energy she had after the events of the folk dance. This moment in Summer Festival appears to say that she can now be assertive in more mundane situations. To add to the conflict, we discover that Nishkata has a real aversion towards being seen as Takagi's date by others. He believes that this is a date as well, no matter how much he doesn't want to. His half-hearted denial and his panic when challenged to Takagi's first game, if anyone thinks we're on a date, you lose, give this away. He tries to convince himself that it's not a date by convincing Takagi, but this illusion he is trying to create is shattered the moment they arrive at their first stall, and the stall owner refers to them as a couple. This sends a clear message to Nishkata. This is a date, and anyone who sees them will immediately believe this to be the case. Takagi proposes a new game as punishment for losing the first, one in which Nishkata will win if he can do date-like things. This puts Nishkata into a bit of a daze. He begins seeing couples all around him doing date-like things such as holding hands. And in this moment, he outright rejects that he can do, or that he would even want to try, any of it. This panic and complete reluctance to even consider a romantic gesture serves as a contrast to a later point in the story. He desperately looks for a way out, which he finds when he sees a goldfish scooping game. When Takagi asks if playing games like this is date-like, Nishkata strongly argues that it is not, that this is a challenge that will decide if the dating game goes ahead. This confirms to us that his priority is to nullify the game as opposed to winning it, further emphasising his refusal to even consider any sort of romantic gesture. In my first impressions video for episode 12, I said that the goldfish scooping game had some interesting implications, and here is where I will finally elaborate on that point. This scene heavily implies that both the Nishkata and Takagi 
like kids. Nishkrita became distracted by these two children when they began scooping for fish, and he watched them with a sweet smile on his face. Takagi seemingly realises that this is what led Nishkrita to lose, and she seems very happy about it but not because she is one. After the game, Takaki gives her and Nishkata's goldfish to the younger sister, and both of them take joy in the happiness they have created for this little girl. All of this strongly sends a message that these two like kids. They think that kids are cute, they want to make them happy, and they are not adverse to being around them. Takagi announces that the game is a tie, despite having caught more fish than Nishkata. Most games in the series that end in a tie do so because the game cannot be complete for one reason or another. However, this tie was created by both participants achieving a win condition. Takagi won by having caught more fish, and Nishkata won by doing something date-like. What date-like thing did Nishkata do? Well, arguably one of the most important date-like things someone can do. He showed an aspect of his character that presented him to be a good romantic partner. I've said many times before that Takagi wants a romantic relationship with Nishkata, but I have never gone into specific detail over the kind of relationship she wants. I don't intend on going into that in this video because, well, just look at how long it already is, but I will say, I can imagine why Nishkata liking kids would fit in well with Takagi's vision of their future. The following paragraph references a spin-off story that spoils how Takagi-san ultimately ends. There's a time code on screen now if you want to skip this segment. I believe that this moment is something of a prelude to the Moto series. As we know, Takagi and Nishikata do eventually get together, get married, and have a child. The Moto series shows us time and time again that these two are excellent parents to their daughter and seemingly enjoy spending time with her. So I believe that this fish catching scene is something of a precursor to that dynamic. Dynamic. Of course, because the fish catching game was only a tie, the dating game is still on, and Takagi gives Nishikata a chance to win by giving him an opportunity to feed her. It is clear at this point that winning is not Takagi's priority. What she wants is to have a proper date with Nishikata, and she tries to trick him into participating by exploiting his competitive nature. As far as she is concerned, winning is Nishikata's sole motivation, but it becomes clear that this may not be the case. When he fails to feed her, she again tries to appeal to his competitive side by wondering aloud if he even knows what couples do on dates. Of course, Nishikata claims that he does, but that he might not want to win this game. This is the first time that we have ever heard Nishikata say that he may not want to win a game. This may say that his thirst for victory is inferior to his insecurities around Takagi, or that he understands what Takagi is trying to do with this competition and doesn't want to play along. Either way, Nishikata has made it clear that he would rather lose the game than perform an intimate gesture, but seemingly understands that an intimate gesture is something that would make Takagi happy. Remember what I said in the souvenirs analysis. Making Takagi happy now outweighs his desire for victory, but it doesn't outweigh his insecurities. At least, not yet. It is after this that we get our first instance of Nishikata losing Takagi. He spots Yukari, Mina, and Sane walking in his direction and decides to hide. Nishikata knows what Yukari thinks about his relationship with Takagi because of his knowledge of her tendency to talk about them in sneers and her obviously getting the wrong idea in eye drops. Nishikata hides because he doesn't want anyone he knows thinking that he and Takagi are on a date, which he knows will definitely happen thanks to the interaction with the store owner back in the beginning. After successfully hiding from his classmates, Nishikata looks for Takagi but nearly cannot find her. He eventually does, but this establishes that the two can be separated in this crowd and foreshadows that they eventually will. When they are back together, Nishkata is unwilling to admit what had separated them, but he is relieved to have found her. When I said in the promises analysis that Nishkata wanted to go to the summer festival with Takagi, this is the moment I was thinking of. Despite the nerves and competitive tendencies, Nishkata is genuinely having a nice time with Takagi, and was genuinely worried when they were separated. In the following scene, we get the two playing ring toss, something they said they would do all the way back in Lottery. You'll notice that this scene is using the instrumental of Zero Centimeters, which I have said in the past is a song that comes up whenever the main characters are creating a memory, which would fit here given that the characters are doing something they had planned to do before the invitation to the festival was even given. But again, I wonder if I might have been wrong about the purpose of this song, if it instead shares the same meaning of Zero Centimeters lyrics, if this instrumental track is being played during moments where the two are becoming closer. Both previous scenes that used the zero centimeters instrumental 
Kanto will show Nishikata or Takagi on some kind of adventure, and this scene shows the two in a situation where Nishikata is supposedly able to show off. I must also acknowledge the real possibility that there is no thematic link between these scenes at all, but I'm reluctant to accept that given the thought that was clearly put into other aspects of the show. Something else I find interesting about this scene is the inclusion of Tanabe. Chances are the intention was to just have him be the reason that Nishikata loses this time, but I like to think about how his appearance here contrasts with his last prominent appearance. In Camping Trip, Tanabe was a direct obstacle, a force that would have separated Nishikata and Takagi during a vital moment had he found them. Here in Summer Festival, however, he is only a minor foil to Nishikata and is in no position to separate the pair. I like to think about how this night is so important to Takagi and Nishikata that the most intense figure of authority they have ever faced is now just reminding them to generally behave properly and is otherwise powerless to do anything else. When looking for prizes afterwards, Nishikata seems disappointed in his loss. However, we get a moment that shares some similarities with the first moment in Messages. In both cases, Nishikata finds a silver lining in his defeat that relates to Takagi's happiness. In Messages, it was retroactively realising that a failed prank had a positive effect on Takagi and being content with that. In this scene, when digging through the low tier prizes, he finds something that he knows he can give to Takagi and this certainly makes him seem less upset about the defeat. Again, this further shows that making Takagi happy is more important to him than defeating her. Takagi is of course surprised by this. After Nishikata made such a fuss about not being on a date and even going as far as to say that he didn't want to win their dating game, he finally does something genuine. No competition, no pranks, he just sees an opportunity to make Takagi happy and does it. She appreciates the gift and even gives him the prize that she chose, a mask from a manga that she once showed interest in during season one, potentially a light symbol of her desire to learn more about Nishikata and the things he enjoys. This moment functions as something of a turning point. From here on out, they stop playing games and having competitions. The nervous energy has dissipated to the point where they are able to just hang out, and that last bout of dissipation was all thanks to Nishikata extending an olive branch. Takagi hands Nishikata her kinshaku to hold while she tries to put the pin in her hair. Nishikata further emphasises the aforementioned turning point by making a helpful suggestion to find some more light. While making his way through the crowd, Nishikata again notices a couple holding hands as he had at the beginning of the episode. But instead of panicking as he had done earlier, he looks at Takagi's hand and we get a very similar moment to what we got in Nurse's Office. Nishikata genuinely considers holding Takagi's hand. His total reluctance to consider any romantic gesture had disappeared along with his competitive tendencies. When Takagi notices this, she looks at her hand confused, and Nishikata is so embarrassed to have been caught that he puts the robot zombie mask on. Whether Takagi understands what Nishikata was just thinking or imagines that he is just nervous in general, she compliments the look and doesn't pry for information. Despite the general nerves that are still present, I believe that this brief exchange from a progressional point of view is here to emphasise that these two are now just genuinely having a nice time without getting distracted by their rivalry. Narratively, the mask serves to cover Nishikata's face and obscure his view of Takagi for what happens next. Nishikata again sees some classmates approaching him and is so focused on them that he loses track of Takagi. Again, Nishikata's concern comes from people he knows thinking he is on a date, especially Takeo and Kimura, who never take his denouncing of Takagi seriously and have walked in on one of his dates before. In the following scene, Kimura acts very much like Mano did all the way back in swimsuit from season one. He notices that Nishikata is not alone thanks to the Kinshaku that Takagi had handed him earlier and decides to ensure that he and Takeo won't get in the way. After this, Nishikata almost forgets his denial over this being a date and looks for Takagi for assurance. But Takagi isn't there. He calls out to her but she does not appear like she had last time. She's gone. He stands alone in a crowd, looking the most defeated he has all episode, because he is finally seeing repercussions for letting his insecurities get the better of him. He has achieved something that not even Tanabe could do in this instance. He has allowed them to be properly separated. Takagi also notices that Nishikata is gone just as the fireworks begin, the part of this event that had been hyped up since the very first scene, the very same scene that preemptively explains why they can't just call each other. They are completely isolated at the moment where it was most important for them to be together. 
The song Kimi to Hikari begins to play as Nishikata and Takagi begin looking for each other. Takagi checks with the candy apple store owner that made Nishikata lose the very first game of the episode, and Nishikata checks with the old man running the ring toss game. Both of these people were a cause of and a witness to one of Nishikata's losses respectively. But the fact that they appear again now represents the severity of the situation our main characters find themselves in. This is far more important than any of their silly games. None of that is important anymore. I can't help but compare this scene to the finale of season 1, Seating Arrangement. Both stories see the main characters being separated, but the separation in Seating Arrangement was out of their control, and when they did get back together, nothing had been lost. In this story, they are separated by a preventable mistake, amplifying the desperation to reunite, and no matter when they get back together, they have already missed part of the fireworks show but I'm getting ahead of myself. Kimura sees Takagi frantically moving through the crowd alone and immediately realises that something is wrong. Takagi looks towards the fireworks for a moment and it seemingly hits her right here that she should be enjoying them with Nishikata, not running around looking for him. To say she is disappointed would be an understatement. Everything she had been through since worries was to be here for this moment with Nishikata and now she's missing it. Now, I don't believe Takagi has any resentment or frustration towards Nishikata at this moment. In fact, she may even blame herself for this situation. Now that point is purely speculation, but the last time Takagi saw Nishikata was when she caught him thinking about holding her hand and being embarrassed by it. Combine this with how flustered he has been all night thanks to her teasing and you get the idea that as far as Takagi is aware, the separation could have been intentional. She could have overstepped and made Nishikata too uncomfortable to stick around. It could have been her ultimate weakness, her being unable to stop herself from teasing Nishikata, that drove them apart. Of course, regardless of whether she believes this or not, we know that this is not the case, and she knows it isn't the case as soon as she sees Nishikata again, but once more, I am getting ahead of myself. We take a brief break to see where all the side characters are. There are three reasons for this. One, it shows us where the characters are up to. Mano has finally gotten some alone time with Nakai, and when she is caught staring at him, she briefly worries that he may not enjoy being stared at, just like she was worried that he didn't accept her feelings in Valentine's Day. But he smiles at her, accepting her feelings and sharing the moment, leaving Mano a little flustered but ultimately the happiest we have seen her this season. We see Hamaguchi and Hojo watching the fireworks together. Hojo steps closer to Hamaguchi, showing that she does like him despite her posturing, and Hamaguchi freaks out a little, showing that he will drop the mature facade under the right conditions. We see the B-plot trio. The running theme for most of their stories is that Yukari, or occasionally Mina, is on a different page to the others, and the conflict of their stories comes from the friction between their different points of view. In this moment, however, they are all on the same page all just enjoying the fireworks together. Lastly, we see some miscellaneous side characters. Tanabe, the guys from Critical Hit, the kid from arm wrestling, Samiri and Takagi's other friend. There's no narrative importance to this shot, but it does perfectly express the second reason that we are seeing these characters to say goodbye. This is the last time that we see any of these people for the entire season, so this fireworks scene is a perfect opportunity to send them off. Third and finally, it serves as a devastating contrast between all these characters enjoying the fireworks versus Takagi and Nishikata who are desperately looking for each other and subsequently missing said fireworks. We then get what I described in my first impressions video and still describe today as the best bro moment in the entire show. Kimura sees Nishikata looking for Takagi and screams to him that she is up the nearby stairs. He is so pleased that he was able to help reunite these two, which is interesting when you consider his supposedly indifferent attitude in Sneeze. Perhaps Kimura's priority is and always has been to keep his friends happy. He does entertain them all in worries and usually gives Nishikata advice when he asks for it. Another point worth making about this exchange is that Nishikata waves thanks to Kimura and makes a beeline for the stairs. There is no hint of embarrassment or shame that he is looking for Takagi or that Kimura is explicitly helping him to do so, starkly contrasting with his attitude in Camping Trip when he tries in vain to deny that he has any interest in her. Nishikata charges up the stairs with everything he's got, so much so that he needs to catch his breath on the landing. When he looks up and sees Takagi, he is absolutely thrilled to have found her. 
Takagi, who at this point had likely given up hope that she would find Nishikata in time, sees him on the stairs. Seeing how exhausted he is would clearly tell her how much effort he has put into finding her, and that mixed with the relief of having found him would make her so very happy. The two use the stairs to finally get back together, something that happened off screen in seating arrangement but that we get to see here in all its glory. They finally reunite just as the fireworks end. As I said back in the first impressions video, the significance of this moment is that Nishikata's nerves have cost him and Takagi the chance to create a lifelong memory together. This time, however, I also have the context of making memories being a minor theme of this show. Nishikata knew from the moment that he had lost Takagi that he was responsible for their separation, that his embarrassment to be seen with her cost them the chance to see the fireworks together, which is far more devastating when you consider the points I made in the promises analysis about why he invited her in the first place. This moment was important to Takagi. She went through a great deal of turmoil to make it happen, and it was something that Nishikata himself was excited for. And all of this was undone by a single moment wherein he let his insecurities get the better of him. The following shot of people exiting the temple and Nishikata's notice of these people sets up a familiar scene. Nishikata is going to be seen with Takagi and people are going to think that he is on a date. Usually, in a moment like this, Nishikata would become flustered and distant, but after everything that's happened, he knows what he needs to do. He understands the stakes of Takagi's night being ruined and acts appropriately. He prioritizes Takagi's want to be closer above his embarrassment to do so. He accepts the consequences for his mistakes and puts himself into a short-term embarrassing situation for long-term benefits. He shows real maturity as opposed to the fake maturity he had shown throughout the season, and grabs Takagi's hand. He does this for many reasons other than the point I made before about taking responsibility. He also grabs her hand because it's something that he is able to do now. As I outlined in my hand-holding video essay, Nishikata has slowly but surely warmed up to the idea of holding Takagi's hand throughout the season, and this is a moment in which he is finally able to do so without any sense of hesitation or ulterior motive. He also means what he says when he tells Takagi that it would suck to be separated again. This comment can be taken two ways, both in the literal sense that he doesn't want to be physically separated at the festival again, and in a more metaphorical sense, that Nishikata understands that he needs to be able to show his feelings for Takagi to avoid being separated, temporarily or for good. He needs to begin crossing the Milky Way to meet her, lest there always be a sky of stars between them. He is embarrassed to hold Takagi's hand, but just like in Sneeze and Nurse's Office, he fights through the embarrassment to do what is right. And just like he explicitly stated in Two Choice Question, he would rather face the embarrassment that comes with being around Takagi head on, than lose her forever. But why would he rather face that embarrassment? If being around Takagi is so mentally draining, then why would he bother? Well, that brings us to the last reason that he grabbed her hand. A reason that I have said more than a few times throughout this series, and that I will mention here again. Nishikata does like Takagi. He has liked her for a very long time. A lack of romantic interest is not what is keeping them apart, but rather his reluctance to accept those feelings. Time and time again, Nishikata is confronted with these romantic feelings for Takagi, but he always finds an out. He always manages to distract himself and bury those thoughts all over again. But buried thoughts are still there. And at this moment, he finally acts in accordance with those feelings. I said in the hand-holding video essay that hand-holding was a metaphor for the pair's connection. Nishikata begins the show refusing to hold Takagi's hand or even admit that he had, showing us that he refuses to entertain the idea that he might like Takagi. As the show goes on, he becomes more and more open to the idea of holding her hand, either through obligation or for the sake of victory. This shows us that he is more willing to entertain the idea that he may like Takagi under the right conditions. This gesture in Summer Festival tells us that, for at least a moment, Nishikata is willing to accept those feelings and act on them. After this, we see the two sitting on a beach with sparklers. Takagi tells Nishikata that he has won their dating game, as fireworks on the beach is very much a date-like activity. Nishikata denies that this is date-like and says that he just wanted to beat her at something to make up for the fact that he had been losing all night. Interestingly, I think that this is just an excuse given the facial expression he wears while making this claim. 
I think that Nishikata still feels bad about making them miss the fireworks, and is doing this to try and make up for it. Takagi tells Nishikata that he has not been losing at all. Now at face value, this statement can be taken literally. The fishing game was a tie because of Nishikata showcasing his fondness for children, his ring toss loss was nullified when he gave her the hairpin, or that he won the dating game by holding her hand. But. When have we ever been satisfied with face value? On a deeper level, the idea of losing is a stand-in for the guilt Nishikata has for ruining Takagi's evening, and that winning is a stand-in for forgiveness that he does not believe he deserves. Takagi understands that this is what he means and reassures him that despite missing the fireworks, she knows how hard he tried to find her and appreciate his romantic gesture of hand-holding afterwards. That even if the night didn't go to plan, it was still ultimately a positive experience. If you want to go even deeper than that, you could even water down this metaphorical interpretation and apply it over the entire show. What if by losing, Nishikata is referring to his reluctance to treat Takagi as more than a rival and accepts that this is a flaw with himself? He somewhat understands that the conflicts they both face in camping trip, worries and summer festivals could have been avoided if he were more honest with himself. In this case, Takagi telling him that he hasn't been losing would be saying that she accepts him the way he is and his attitude towards their relationship. Maybe she's happy with where they are right now. That may seem like a stretch, but immediately following this, Takagi draws us back into their rivalry by declaring victory over their sparkler game. This would also take us back to one of the more important moments in Valentine's Day, when she gave Nishikata both Honmei and Giri chocolate as a symbol of her desire to become romantic, but also being content with their friendship. I said all the way back in my OP analysis that this season of Takagi-san was laser focused on developing the romantic aspects of Nishikata and Takagi's relationship, and every story has developed to this point in one way or another. Textbook established that Nishikata was nervous about being close to Takagi, just so that they could have him grow out of it. Hypnotism confirmed that Nishikata did care for Takagi more than he cared for victory. Skipping Stones confirmed that Nishikata cares for Takagi on an instinctual level, even if he won't admit it. Ice tells us that Nishikata is not completely adverse to intimate gestures. Appearance sets up his heightened intuition in worries. Valentine's Day confirms that Nishikata understands Takagi likes him, and that Takagi is content with being friends for now. April Fool's Day gives Nishikata the epiphany that a life without Takagi is not something he is interested in. Forms of address, new school year, bitter taste and questions set up Nishikata's false idea of maturity to show how much he has grown by the time he shows some real maturity. Arm wrestling sees Nishikata realising that he likes holding Takagi's hand. Bicycle has Takagi confirm that she is interested in holding Nishikata's hand. Happy Birthday tells us that Takagi will put the teasing aside when she wants to make Nishikata happy, and that she will ultimately succeed in doing so. After School reminds us as an audience how well we understand the dynamic between our main characters. Speaking of the main characters, Sneeze establishes how the side characters view their relationship. Revenge confirms to Takagi that Nishikata is as interested in holding her hand as she is in holding his. Dodgeball confirms to Takagi that Nishikata will reciprocate her feelings when she is ready to share them. Date confronts Nishikata with the fact that people are going to see him and Takagi as a couple, and that he should maybe get used to that. Camping Trip has Takagi question and reaffirm her confidence that Nishikata will admit he is in love with her someday. Storage Closet has Nishikata pranking Takagi in a way that has them spend extra time with each other. Nurse's Office confirms to Takagi and us that Nishikata will hold her hand when the time is right. Lottery has the two speculate on their future and potentially how it will be spent together. Achi Menhoi confronts Nishikata with the realisation that he might like Takagi romantically. Worries reaffirms to Takagi that Nishikata is worth fighting for, and has Nishikata realise how intimately he understands Takagi. Messages has Nishikata begin to accept that creating happiness for Takagi may be more satisfying to him than victory. Eye drops, hide and seek, and treasure hunting all see Takagi telling Nishikata that she doesn't mind people seeing them in a romantic way, because she sees them that way and wants him to as well. Steps confirms to the audience that Nishikata will create a reason to be with Takagi, and Takagi explicitly points out what that says about him. 
Souvenirs concretely sets Nishikata's priority for competition below his priority for making Takagi happy. Promises sees Nishikata step up and act on the feelings he has about Takagi, and finally, Summer Festival takes every single aspect I've mentioned and culminates it all into an episode in which Nishikata accepts that he cares for Takagi and will put his embarrassment aside to show it. At the time of writing this, there is no Season 3 confirmed, but if there is, I can imagine that Nishikata only has so much growth to go before he finally admits to himself that he likes Takagi. I hope there is a Season 3, and I hope that it continues to develop Nishikata just as much as Season 2 has. The progression of these characters is ultimately what sells me on the show. Sure, the tone and style are cute and lighthearted, but one does not simply write over 43,000 words or create nearly 200 minutes of video content for a single season of a show that feels nice to watch. It is and always has been the progression of the characters that interests me most. And if there is a season 3, I hope that it continues to develop this relationship between Takagi and Nishikata. And that is it, not just for this analysis, but the entire series. I'd like to thank my patrons, Orion Train, Quincy Chamberlain, Lars Espen, Data52, Jamman5, and Savos2342. I'd also like to thank all of you for watching, commenting, and generally supporting my channel as the series has gone on. I hope that you will join me on whatever venture I embark on next, but until then, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.